guys, welcome back to the channel. I've, I've got a really awesome guest. I actually went to high school with uh, Mr. Mr. Cameron Cook. And uh, Cameron, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Let me give a quick background um, and I'll let him hop into his story. But listen to this, listen to this resume, right? Uh, acquisition analyst with Industry Pro, sales rep with Fox Pest Control, did over 100000 in personal revenue, right? Yeah. Uh, Analyst at Wasatch Venture Partners, PE intern with Ensign Peak, which is a really big firm down in Utah, investment banking analyst with Logan Growth, and an incoming analyst with Guggenheim Partners. Holy cow. How old are you? I'm 23. <laughs> Holy cow. No, that's really impressive. Cam, why don't you tell us your story as to like how you got interested in what you are and like, I guess growing up a little bit, like how you sure. got this this area? Yeah, so... I'm pulling out my LinkedIn right now just to remember what I've done. But <laughs> um, yeah, so grew up Pocatello, Idaho. Um, everyone around me that seemed quote unquote successful was a doctor or a dentist. And so if you didn't go to the medical school, you were doomed to be an accountant and make 30 or 40K a year. Um, that was just the, the mindset. Uh, but I decided to come to Utah State because my brother was doing pre-dental here. And so we roomed together um, our first year. Um, did about a year of regular uh, classes. Uh, a lot of it was like intro to biology and stuff like that. And then started the second year, my sophomore year. Um, went to donate plasma and they pricked my finger and I woke up underneath the table and uh, <laughs> I didn't even make it to the needle. It just pricked my finger. And I was like, Oh boy. Like, You're like, I'm not doing oh, that. <laughs> I don't know if medicine's for me. So had a couple other experiences like that. Um, and then like two weeks in, I was taking gen chem at the time. And I was just like, I don't care about the periodic table. And I need to do something else. So switched into business, started out in marketing, um, had no idea what I wanted to do. I uh, did a couple internships um, the previous summer with actually my father-in-law. He runs a staffing company and okay. he was going and buying different staffing companies. So that was my first exposure to like M&A, buying a company and, and integrating it into a business. So I uh, did that. had a friend that did uh, uh, worked at University Growth Fund. Uh, it's called UGF. Um, but he's like, you should look into like, uh, venture capital and private equity and that sort of stuff. I'm like, okay, I'll look into it. So I did a remote uh, banking internship at Industry Pro. Um, yeah, and I was just like basically sourcing, uh, trying to find different companies for their private equity clients. Um, when I got married, I was getting married around the time. When I got married, after I bought my wife's wedding ring, we had $250 in our yes. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, so it was that was a sad day. Um, luckily, we got Pell Grants, but um, decided to do door to door to just kind of be able to have money to get through college. So uh, recruited a big team, uh, ended up recruiting seven guys that stayed the whole summer um in that team i think it was me and that team combined did over half a million in revenue wow uh, which was great and then just i ended up selling pretty well um did over 100k in, in sales revenue so that helped with the bank account to be sure, able to, sure. to do other things um but i got back and realized um summer sales probably wasn't a sustainable career path like most realized really quick so um yeah, I just started networking and got a, a job at Wasatch Venture Partners and just looked through financial statements and helped with that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, didn't seem like the best fit long term um, because they were based in Logan and we kind of want to live somewhere else. Um, but just, yeah, just applied. And uh, around that time, I applied to University Growth Fund um, and I prepped. I did a case competition. We took second. Wow. And I remember... I prepped a ton. I got in the first interview. I thought I did good and I got cut the first round. And I was like, oh no, like, is this the, is this the right career path? Like I did everything I could and, you know, I just got cut. So it was pretty humbling experience after doing all that. But um, I decided to take a semester off actually, and just kind of figure out what I wanted to do. So that was this past spring, um, 2022. Uh -huh um and just was working and, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I went to a career fair at a private equity firm uh, down in Draper and they were like if you don't do banking or consulting 
it's gonna be very hard for you to break into private equity ever unless you like start a super successful business and sell it or something right and so that was kind of the the switch for me to be like okay i need to take banking seriously and before that i just kind of would go back and forth what i wanted to do and i just decided if i'm going to do this let's do it for real and do a good job so Applied Enzyme Peak, they they run the churches, LDS churches uh, investment fund. Uh, got got an internship, was very grateful for that, and learned a ton about private equity there, and got to meet with a lot of private equity people. Um, and then apply to investment banking, uh, loan and growth advisors. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's a remote internship. It's been awesome. Learned a ton about everything banking. And around that time, I just was applying to. Um, get into Guggenheim Partners and just any investment bank for full time. Okay. Um, and yeah, just basically looked up a huge Excel list of banks that were good and just started applying and and doing all the technicals to do well. And um, luckily enough, I, I did well in the first interview for Guggenheim. They flew me out, and then I did well enough in the Super Day. So I got the return the the offer for next summer, and then hopefully that will lead to full time. So that's a little bit about me. I know that's a little bit longer than the normal story, but I'm sure we have enough time. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great. And and that actually hops right into like my first question is is like what what do you feel like was the hardest part of 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 breaking into kids because private equity is pretty elusive, like mm -hmm. very, very selective with who they choose. So what would you say was it right place, right time? Was it like, hey, this is this is how I networked with people or this is how yeah. I built up my resume. Like what, what do you feel was the big pivot point for you? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest pivot point was uh, like door to door sales for me was not going to be sustainable. <laughs> and then I was like, I need to find a career path that's engaging um, that pays well. And so, you know, I went from like pre-med background, knowing nothing about business to like trying to figure out banking, which seems daunting to a lot of people um, in private equity. So um, what's not on my resume is like uh, around the industry pro time, I got cut from like three intern, three spots that I applied and worked really hard for, got cut again, you know, around the UGF time. And uh, I... Uh, applied at Sorensen Impact. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of that. Just, I don't think so. Okay. Um, they're a firm and they're an impact fund in uh, Salt Lake um, at the U. But that was like around, I think it was after I did sales. Um, but I remember going in, I prepped this memo and it was like the worst memo ever. And they just sat me down and I just felt like an idiot for an hour. Like they would ask me questions and I couldn't back it up. So it was, it just felt like, a year and a half of just feeling like an idiot like humiliation <laughs> it was like but just being humble enough to like accept correction um was like super big because it took me like a year and a half to like kind of figure out how to do it and then just buckling down and learning everything I could uh kind of took me to the next level to be able to like get competitive internships and stuff so well, no, I think it really goes to show your character and your work ethic, because usually I would think that, you know, people would hit, you know, one, two or three failed or rejections, right, of looking, looking silly and thinking, OK, like, I don't want to look dumb ever. And so would you say that 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 was something that that set you apart from the crowd? What would you say, like, is has helped set you apart and 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 really help you make you unique with your story? Yeah. So I think the the biggest thing is definitely like that grit. Um, I remember when I was applying at Guggenheim, um, yeah, I go in there and there's, I pull up the list and the kids that place there, they're like from like Columbia and NYU and like schools like that. And Pop to your I, get in, I get into the super day and everyone around me was like, you know, just big schools. And, and then it was like Utah state. And I'm like, Oh, uh, you know, not very big at all. Um, but yeah, I was just sitting around and then uh, in my interviews, we talked about golfing, my mission and door-to-door -door sales. Weird. Okay. Yeah, like, and they were like, they saw that I had a good resume, but they, they were like, they weren't used to seeing people being able to grind. And so like, 
seeing them be like, oh, like you had 200 bucks. And then what, what did you do about it? You went and knocked doors for four months, like 16 weeks, just to make money to go through while the kid next to me, a lot of them seemed like more like trust fund kids. Sure. Uh, and I don't know if they were or not, but that was just kind of the vibe I got was like, they, like, they didn't need to like work hard to do that stuff. And I think that's kind of set me apart um, in that big interview right there. But yeah, just the grit and, you know, being okay, like when you fail, you're going to feel like an idiot and they're going to tell you what you did wrong. And then you can either be like, no, you're wrong. Or you could be like, okay, I feel pretty stupid right now, <laughs> but I'm going to try to implement that. But, and after you do that enough, you start to realize, like, if you just keep going, um, I had a mentor that tell, told me, like, if you just keep trying pretty much, you'll break into the industry. If you just don't give up, that's basically what he said. And I'm like, okay. I'll try that. And then it's just, keep going. It, it took like a year and a half. I postponed my graduation a year just to get on cycle, but that was able to help me like really understand and know what I'm getting into and, and be competitive. So. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what, what a cool story. And so you, you start Guggenheim uh, next semester or next year or, or when? Uh, next you... summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. If you, if you were to like, uh, I guess, boil down your experience what what would you say that you've learned about yourself in this in this job hunt process or in this industry hunt process like um what what have you discovered and like where would you like to take this where do, where do you want to go with it yeah so i think the biggest thing i've discovered is um like it's good to try a lot of things um i think sometimes we get set in the like no i'm doing this one path and then you do it like three years later and you're like, I hate this job, you know? So um, I always like recommend people to like do an internship or try to do an internship pretty much every semester. And just like, no matter what it is, like you'll just like learn quickly. Um, there, there's stuff in like door-to-door -door sales that when I look, when we're like looking at a company or if I'm like looking at stuff, I'm like, oh, it reminds me of something I did in sales. Like, oh, the reason why door-to-door -door sales works is because they have a recurring business model and this is how they acquire customers. But it's like, I'm able to put a real life experience to it versus, a, you know, like a textbook. So I always say like, just try to do as many internships and different work experiences, even if it seems unrelated, um, it makes you more interesting than, you know, just doing like five banking internships and going in. It's like, just try to do as much different things obviously try to relate it a little bit but it's it's good to do a lot so yeah. yeah absolutely and and where do you see do you see yourself um do you want to go work at, at like Hugenheim for or or a big bank like that for for a long time for many years do you see yourself uh starting your own fund or your own business like um what what does what does future Cameron look like in your head mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So I think the, like the 20 year plan is like, uh, I own a bunch of real estate and then I own some sort of business that just feeds into the real estate. And I buy like, I do like four days of that business. And then I go in and on the weekends, I just look at properties. Like that's kind of like the dream. And then I golf with people in between. Um, there's a lot of ways to get there. So, um, I think for sure, I'm definitely saying two years at Guggenheim, but if I really like what I'm doing, uh, I'll probably just stay on for a while and then just see what comes up. Um, we're kind of in no rush uh, for that. My wife wants to go to like nurse anesthetist school. She's in nursing school right now. Um, so it kind of just depends on like where she gets accepted and things like that. But definitely, definitely two years of banking. I would like to do private equity. Um, eventually um in some capacity either as an associate or later and then i'd like to run a business eventually and then kind of see after those six seven eight years at the beginning see what i really like and then just go and specialize um into what i want to do and that may uh, uh include like an mba at a top school or something i don't know i don't know yet but um that's kind of the track is two or three years banking. If I really like it, stay on. If I have a good opportunity for private equity, maybe I go do private equity a couple of years. And then maybe 
go and join a business or go get an MBA and uh, try to get a big scholarship and then come back and then kind of see what doors open up. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay. All yeah. right. No, I really like that. Here, here's a, here's a, a question that I think you, you would enjoy as to like, in what ways have you seen your private equity experience uh, affect your life? Like, I don't know if that's like personal life and I guess public opinion flipping over this way. Like sometimes I think public or private equity um, gets this, gets this uh, rap as to just buying and consolidating businesses. But like, in what ways do you feel that private equity is beneficial to, to the marketplace or to our society? Like why, why do you feel that it's important? Yeah. So the biggest thing, like I remember I was having a conversation with someone and they're like, I don't know why these private equity guys get paid all this money or these venture capitalist guys. And I'm like, you do realize like you invest in the S and P, right? And they're like, yeah, like of course. And I'm like, how do you think those companies got public? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, so like, it, it's just kind of like the process is, you know, they, there's like a venture capital, an early stage company, and then they either get funding or they don't, but they grow. But a lot of times they can't grow without funding to even get to the stage to become public, like investing in Airbnb when it happened possible. Cause I'm sure they had multiple rounds of funding prior to that, their IPO. Um, so that's where I think it's beneficial as it gets to you those, it allows those really big stable companies to be public stock. So everyday investors can invest um, in those stocks. Uh, that, that's like the biggest thing for me is why I think it is beneficial um, because they just can't grow without the funding needed uh, to do so. Um, I can't remember your other question. Something to do like. Without... Oh, you're good. You're good. Has, has your, as your, uh, like has your significant other or people in your family been like, Hey, like, tone it down with the finance or you're, you're coming off very finance or, or have yeah. you ever like done it so much to where it's ingrained into your head to your like that you carry it over into your personal life? Like, Oh yeah. You, oh yeah. Do you have oh, any yeah, yeah. funny examples of that? Yeah. I'm trying to think, but um, yeah, I, I feel like my mind is like an Excel sheet that's open <laughs> all the time. And I'm just like, Kept. Like I'll see a pro like a walk by and see an apartment complex and I'm like, okay, I bet that is cash flowing this much per month. Here's why, here's why it's a good or bad location. And then I just like walk by or I like see a company and I like think that. And then my wife, I love to talk. I feel like one of my love languages is like having someone listen to me. So um, <laughs> like I feel bad for my wife sometimes because I go and explain something like 15 times in different ways. And she's like, I've heard this like 15 times. And I'm like, I know, but have you thought of like this scenario and how this could affect like this thing? And she's like, this is like 15 years in the future. You know that, right? And I'm like, I know, but like, we don't plan like what's going to happen. So, right? I love yeah. that. so I feel like it's like every day I'm always like, should we do this? Should we buy this? Why should we buy that? You know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, that, that's really cool. Uh, that's pretty much it. And, and in terms of like, uh, I, I guess our audience uh, demographic is uh, about the same age as we are, maybe a little bit older, a little bit younger. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to our audience? Is there any like lasting words of, of, of oh, thought wisdom. And wisdom? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So is most of your audience trying to go into something like banking or high corporate finance or something like that? So yeah, essentially, mostly, mostly the individuals have been finance professionals and, and banking and uh, private equity. I think we've got a, a growth fund and a, a VC guy that we've interviewed, but yeah, anywhere from business to marketing, uh, generally just within people who want to progress, you know, with, with a growth mindset, entrepreneur yeah. Type mindset. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is like, um, just like go and try a lot of things. Like when I look through my resume, um, like I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven things on my LinkedIn and uh, six of the seven were jobs not posted in my school, like job postings. So like I would go apply to all the like Utah State jobs, get yep. cut, like an idiot 
and then have to go and find another opportunity and like network. Um, and, and then I get these other opportunities that other kids don't get because it wasn't posted to a hundred students. Right. So, um, I think that's the biggest advice is like, just because you get cut, um, I, like I remember one kid, uh, just saying something like, hey, I was excited to go to one fund. Um, and I thought it was like the coolest thing at the time and Then I worked, uh, for the church and I got to see a bunch of funds and I'm like, oh, that was like not a good job at all. <laughs> <laughs> but like I wouldn't know that because um that like some of those jobs are just the opportunities that came to me but like you can go and create your own opportunities um even if it's not like through your resources at your school or your direct network like you if you have LinkedIn um and like a Gmail account you can pretty much endless possibilities <laughs> there's endless possibilities um yeah like I was the first kid the place at Guggenheim from Utah State out of undergrad, not because like I was smarter or like more intelligent than a lot of my peers, but just because I was like willing to like reach out and like do the stuff. So like be a doer more than like a talker and just like try to reach out and try to do the things. And um, like basically, basically you can get pretty much whatever job you want it might take five years to get to exactly where you want to be. But like, if you're willing to do it coming from a super small school, it's very possible to do it. So I think, I think that was like the biggest mindset shift for me is like um, what's not possible or what is possible. Um, like even in door to door, like there's many people who are like, Oh, it's so hard to recruit one guy and have him stay on. And it's hard. Like it's hard to recruit. Um, but I just decided, I'm like, I want to, I want to be the best recruiter. Get and creative. So, yeah. So I just reached out. I think I reached out to like 600 people, you know, and it's like, it's not like that, like made me like, it's not like I was ta more talented. I just like failed a lot, which like forced me to get results eventually and just learn from, from the mistakes and stuff. So I would just say, yeah, just like whatever, just use your resources to the max and um, wherever you want to work, whatever you want to do, just like Gmail and LinkedIn. That's basically all you need. And they're both free. So <laughs> love it. Well, no, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Cameron. And we'll, uh, we'll throw you up on the channel. We'll make you famous. We'll get it out there on the, right. on the internet. And, and no, I, I really appreciate your story. Thanks for sharing because it inspires. Um, I think it inspires listeners and, and someone someone like me who i'm like okay i'm trying to you know i'm searching for what that looks like as to what sure. i want to pursue in my career and like it's been a big help so your, yeah. your story is awesome yeah well i'm always i don't know if, who views your channel or not but i'm always willing to help anyone who wants to reach out or is interested in banking or like logan growth remote and i think they're hiring for next spring right now um just have them reach out to me i don't you can attach my linkedin or whatever, but more than happy to help anyone um, who's willing to reach out. So, well, awesome. Well, I, I appreciate your time and uh, we'll, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.